Hi everyone, my name is Eileen Liu and I'm the product manager for Snowflake Notebooks, which is in private preview. Snowflake Notebooks provides a cell-based development service where you can write raw SQL, Python, Markdown, use Snowpark, Streamlit, Snowflake Cortex, and much more all in the same place. In today's video, I will demo the very basics of our current features and go over some quick tips. Over the next few months, we'll be releasing a series of notebooks tutorials on this YouTube channel to go deeper into workloads like exploratory data analysis, visualization and app building, data engineering, and AI and machine learning. So stay tuned. Now, let's dive in and take a look at what Snowflake Notebooks has to offer. I'm logged into my Snowflake account. Because Notebooks is natively built in, I don't need to worry about the setup or my environment configuration. To create a notebook, simply click the plus notebook button. I'll pick a database.schema location and a warehouse for it. I recommend that you always start with an extra small warehouse because you can upgrade to a larger one later if you need it. Once I am in, I can start querying data right away. Let me show it in another notebook that I have prepared for this demo. In this notebook, I want to do an analysis on a sample movies dataset. I'm going to start with some SQL in cell 2. Here I'm just getting data from these two tables, samples.movielands.movies and um, the ratings table. Then I want to filter the results by average rating using a Python variable. Not only that, I want the Python variable to take its value from an interactive user input. So in cell three, I created a variable rating slider, which uses a streamlet component, the st.slider component as the input mechanism. So as I drag the slider, you'll see new results being generated down below. If I put it at 3.4, let's say, it'll give me all the movies that have an average rating lower than three, and I can sort the table. If you want to use Python for a data transformation, referencing is even easier. For example, I can convert the above SQL results in cell four to a pandas data frame by using the two pandas function. And here I'm just putting an Altair chart on top of it. I can also just convert it to a Snowpark data frame, especially if I need to operate on a large data set. It'll be much more performant than pandas and I don't need to worry about out of memory errors. So to do that, I'll just need to drop the two pandas uh, function and let me run this. You'll notice that it'll give me a Snowpark data frame object. As another example, with a session created from the get active session function from Snowpark, I can call the Snowpark session dot APIs on my data. Now, you may wonder how I can use Streamlit and Snowpark in a notebook. Note that I've actually already imported them up above here. And you can import more packages from the packages picker. Now I want to show you three quick tips. Tip number one, if you know that you will be operating on the same schema a lot and don't want to type out the fully qualified names of your data objects every single time, simply run the use schema command in a SQL cell to specify where you want to query the data from. So for example, I can add a SQL cell here. And once I run use schema samples.movielands, I'll run this. I will no longer need um, samples.movielands here. I can delete this and this and this should still run successfully. Tip number two. Like I mentioned in the creation step, you can switch to different warehouses in a notebook session. It's very common to go from a small to a larger data set for which you might want to use a larger warehouse to speed up compute. You can run the use warehouse command to do that switch. As you can see, the queries were previously running on Snow Science this um, 
warehouse, but I can switch it to something else. I'm gonna do snow ad hoc, so run this command. And then all the queries in this session will be running on the snow ad hoc uh, to extra large warehouse that I specified. Lastly, I want to call out that we have a few more run options and cell operations alongside their keyboard shortcuts, which you can learn more about here. You can also make a copy of your notebook, export it to a local IPYMB file, and instead of creating a notebook from scratch, you also have the option of importing from your existing projects. This brings us to the end of this demo. Hopefully we have covered the basics for you to get started in Snowflake Notebooks. If you like the video, please press thumbs up and subscribe down below because we'll be uploading more tutorials very soon. I'll see you next time.